I put a lot, a lot, a lot so of effort into the big out arc. Yeah, I think I might this make some adjustments. This is update. This is a scam for nons. This is a story about my gambling addiction. This is a story about a whole lot, like, my history. Like, we're literally badass shit, you know. Just informing you that there was another thing in my thought process before I was even thinking of making the vampire special. The whole reason is this, you know. This is something back when I was in, like, 7th grade. So, before I go into detail, I believe that the big out arc will literally be better than the idea I'm laying down for you right now. So, the thing about it is, is... This is far spread out, and this is kind of gonna be like the history of Trunks. This other special that I'm working on, that Lily, I was literally about to drop before the Vampire special, but that's later on in Lily's series and stuff like that, later feats, you know, so I wasn't really going to, like, drop that yet. And even though it has a beautiful scan that I will be saving for the future, I want to spoil that, but I will spoil, like, a little bit because of the whole point that this is another special I was thinking of dropping, but I'm like, nah, that's too advanced. I can't really drop that yet. And that would be, ooh, ooh, a huge spoiler about what Nons is all about, you know. Not like the actual fact of what it's about. I'm talking about, like, Lily. What's great about Nons and Lily. Fucking, um, I cannot drop the big out arc yet because of Lily. How good it is, but second of all, of how Lily it mimicked my One Piece obsession in 8th grade. So this is another special that I was thinking about doing that I'm definitely doing in the future, but I can't because we have to wait till their powers get a little bit, little bit more advanced. So literally, the crazy thing about it was this. I have spoiled nothing for the big out arc. All I spoiled is like literally who the villain is and that's about it. And that's all that you have to know for the big out arc. Everything else is a surprise. It's filled with literally this on top of this on top of that and literally. There are no spoilers for the big out arc. And Lily, because of that is the reason why I can't really drop the whole idea like this. And so, Lily, so if you know why, it's because, like, I literally actually used to buy clothes off this guy named Al. Al used to make my custom shirts. And Lily, I saw Al, Lily, ride his bike the other day. And Lily, I just missed my bus and he kept on yelling at me trying to get my attention. And I was literally, I was pissed off because I just missed my bus. And, like, literally, I was just like, man, this is not the right time, not the day. And fucking literally, fucking, um, and so this video is also about my gambling addiction. And, like, literally, how people thought I had a crazy mindset when I was coming up back when I was on Tizzler. Now, I want you to understand that, like, these Easter eggs, like, this really tough shit is literally feedback for the community. Every time I put something out, you see what you did and like, literally... And advertisement. There was so much shit that was going on back when I was at the group home. It wasn't even funny. They kept on trying to hook me up for a girlfriend every single time. They literally, they would provide me one. And I'd literally be like, ah, oh, no thank you, literally. Stuff like that. It, like, it wasn't even like that. You know why? It's because I was so obsessed with fucking science and shit. <clears throat> and the real reason why this ties heavily in is I was literally making me shirt after shirt every fucking week. And literally, <clears throat> what he would do is he would make me custom shirts and literally... A lot of nerds make connections today. Oh, Al was based off the Al, the guy you buy shirts from. I'm like, nah, I made Al all the way back when I was in seventh grade, bro. Because I had one piece of addiction like no other. So, the crazy thing about fucking that was, Lily, that's when everything like was like, of price, fair and shit. Because, Lily, what they like, buddy, they made up with an effort. And they, Lily, they kept on posting my content, posting my content. And, Lily, what would happen was this, like, Lily, fucking, um... It was E-40's birthday one time, and literally, what happened was this, like, literally, there's a song by, like, E-40 called Power Up, and literally, fuck it, there was this one time, like, it was his birthday around the shit, and I never miss 40 Wars birthday, I usually just, literally, just fucking, um, every single time, every Jack History Month, I would make a Jack AMV, you know, I would always put on for Dizzler, because that's where I came from, I come from the, like, the Bay Area, so literally, fucking, like, when I make an AMV for a local rapper, that shit hits, but, you know, it was literally at a time where I was a little bit, I was too obsessed with my AMVs back in the day. So, literally, I was looking to smoke all day. Like, literally, you fucking, there's no doobies around, there's none and shit. And so, all of a sudden, like, I walk into the fucking mall, and I'm literally, I'm trying to get motivation to get the power AMV done. And so, I'm just looking for fucking smoke, and I end up walking into this, like, literally, this thick-ass fucking Latina. She's a little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit of a big stomach, but literally, she literally... I had some fat ass fucking titties. It was light skin too, so it was literally fucking like I was literally just looking to smoke the whole time. I was supposed to get E40's A and V done already. So basically, like 
So he's like, man, fuck this around. But Lily, it's just a solid ass nice girl and shit like Lily. And fucking like I was really just talking to her and shit like that. And like Lily, she actually let me hit the blunt. And I shared a whole blunt with her and shit like that. She was just slapping her iPod, trolling her feet and shit. And Lily, I didn't get her number. I didn't get everything. I'm like, okay, well, uh, thanks. And she's like, oh, uh, 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 nice to meet you today. Like Lily, it was over at Bayfair, over like the Bayfair Mall and shit. And Lily, after I got my... And smoke, I fucking dipped. After I got one wanted, I fucking dipped. And, like, I really felt bad. So, like, oh, well, it was nice being here. Then, like, but it really fucking sucked. Um, but it did because, like, I was so fucking obsessed with my goal and shit like that. And, Lily, you really, really, really think, like, somebody like me who literally <laughs> was yelling about pussy after I high, fucking high school lately fucking passed it up. I didn't keep in contact. I didn't do anything. I just said, like, oh, well, thanks for weed. Now, I finally got my fucking weed. And then I was too fucking high when I got home. I couldn't even make that AMV. And so, a devil's in my head, like, like, oh, don't you think that you need a little relief? And literally, that's not 100% a bad thing to say. You know, that's actually very comforting. That is a very comforting thing when you're obsessed with science and you literally just pass up this light-skinned Latina with some big-ass fucking titties. And literally... You fucking, but you gotta understand, that's what you have to understand about me, like, fucking, I had a goal in mind and shit like that, and so, like, literally, my goal was to smoke the blunt, my goal wasn't really <laughs> to tear that ass up, and literally, he was in my head, like, don't you think you need relief for all this work and stuff like that, like, literally, and that was fucking crazy, like, that was a crazy ass thing, and that was true, especially since I know, like, literally, how much medicine it can fucking be, literally, I'm going through too much fucking stress, it could have fucking emptying my fucking nut cage and everything. She was fine as fuck, too. It's just that Lily, I was just more focused on my surroundings instead of Lily just her, you know? So, Lily, I fucking... And I feel like I wasted that point because after I got high, I fucking fell asleep instead of working on the E-40 AP. And Lily, fuck it. I miss 40 wars. Birthday, maybe I do need a break. Maybe I do need, like, a social relief. And then I realized, like, yo, you know, it's for the better because, like, you can't really hold on to shit like that because when you literally hold on to, like, Lily, that is the reason why, like, when you let it go, something else comes, you know? They didn't view it as an emergency, so it's like, it's cool as fuck. She was a really nice person, too. But that's what they freaking mean. And that's what, Lily, I think sometimes, you know. And, you know, when that shit happens, you have to understand that, Lily, the devil's gonna be like, oh, you had an opportunity to do it all nice and stuff like that. Like, I should continuously have opportunities to have stuff like that, like, Lily. Because later on, they put me in a situation where I'm not surrounded by nice girls like that. So it made me twice as hard to get played and even twice as hard to keep a normal conversation. But, at the same time, you have to understand that, Lily, I was heavily focused on my career. And, you know, that's why the devil is literally one of the most, one of my favorite characters on the channel. Because he tells you the right thing at the wrong time. And, Lily, he always fucking does that. The same fucking shit with Travis. Lily, he tells me somebody I already fucking beat. That, Lily, just became the star because, like, Lily, they gave him fucking perspective and shit. And they didn't allow me to have the same fucking perspective as Lily. He was... Literally trying to get me to go all out in a league that was hiding from, like, their actual selves and, like, real life and shit. Like, it really wasn't worth it and shit like that. And literally, and that's why I fucking think that shit is so fucking funny. He tells you the right things, literally. Something that's literally a fucking guarantee. But literally, when you finally get to that end result, it's literally for the wrong reason. You realize that. And, like, that's the crazy thing. So, literally, this all, like, literally just ties into this podcast video. This isn't really... And too much of a podcast. This is literally a big update for my fucking channel. And on to my One Piece obsession. There was going to be another fucking One Piece arc that I was going to be replicating. The special is based off the history of Trunks. But it has nothing to do with time travel. It has nothing to do with Android. It only fits like the feel of the history of Trunks. And what it is, it's um, it's referencing a CP9 arc. And I did make a CP9 arc already back when I was in 8th grade. But I was really just mimicking it. And literally there... I already have a couple of characters set up. I don't have all the characters set up in my head. But it's literally going to be based off like CP9. And literally is what this non-special is going to be based off of. It's going to be a rescue mission. Like just like CP9. And they're going to find the castle just like CP9. So that's basically what's going to happen. It's going to take place in the exact same type of area. Exact same fucking buildings and shit. And literally that's going to be a little bit like when... Non, like Lily gets a little bit more developed, a little bit more power ups, and that's why I couldn't drop it right away. But I can like give you a slight spoiler. This kind of ties into my gambling addiction. The main antagonist 
um, for that special is going to be based off, you know, I can't reveal somebody else. Something really, 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 really good was stuck in my head when I was making this. But, like, I'll give you a slight spoiler. There's this guy who's based off Yuya and Rob Luigi. Yuya Sakaki from Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5 is really confirmed for this special. And he's fighting Gabaya up in the end. And the reason why he's fighting Gabaya is literally because of the love I have for that arc. But I grew a love for Yuya over time. Because literally, I was known as Yugi back in this. Like everybody knew me as fucking Yugi, but like I was cool for doing shit with Yugi. Like Nafta Pharaoh, I was Yugi Moto. So like literally, Yuya literally like inspired me so much to the fucking group home because I met him back when I was fucking struggling and shit. And that was literally my inspiration. So like, everybody knew that I was Yuya because literally, I wasn't fucking Yugi. But when it comes to fucking Yugi on how people view me, I'm Yuya. Fucking that Rastafarian fucking hair. I think that might be homage to Knuckles the Hedgehog. I mean, Knuckles the Echidna. <laughs> but literally, um, Knuckles and Yuya, yeah, I feel like are heavily connected. And, like, that's just my honest opinion. So what I did was, like, literally, I just made this, like, a government thing. And literally, I think they might be bounty hunters for this special. And literally, it's going to be a rescue mission. And there's going to be, literally, intensity like no other. It's going to be intense just like the CP9 arc. But the big out arc is going to be better. Big Al Orc is one of my favorite ideas, and I can't wait to explore it, but one thing I have to tell you is, I literally, I skipped the Big Al Orc when I was in high school, not because, like, it didn't fit in, maybe it fit in, but I felt like I was doing too much, the doing too much factor and non stopped me from putting a lot of ideas that I had out there, and literally, so that's the crazy thing, so this is another fucking update, like, there was a special that I was working on, but, like, literally, I, I pushed it back, because I feel like the other one's gonna be very up facing, they're wondering, like, um... How do you feel about the vampire special? I'm like, man, I really want to work on it. Why a fucking way, but I can't fucking do it because literally I want literally get one chapter out to literally just show people like how Nons is going to go. And literally fucking, I want to actually get that done because that shows discipline. What I'm good at is I'm good at literally, I'm drawing the fucking arc once I'm ready for it. And the real reason why I haven't had a rise block because I already... Went so fucking hard on the high school. I don't want to draw the same. I want to get straight to the fucking fight scene. That literally fucking sucks. But literally fucking, I feel like it'll be better now if I do do that. Because I want to go a little bit more with discipline instead of straight up just fucking riding, riding, riding. But the crazy thing about that is this. This video is all about gambling. This video is all about taking risks. Why people call me crazy. Why people said, why don't you struggle? Like, why actual agency instead of like literally doing this independent thing with our contract and literally so I learned it like this so every time I fucking um buy a shirt from Al I'll get more publicity and they say that I was hustling backwards because I kept on buying shirts but I wasn't selling them and you have to understand when you do that that's actually a form of profit because what's gonna happen is your budget may not increase but your publicity increases and your your quality of content increases and you have to understand that profit isn't always about sales. Profit is about development. So the more you have development, the better it's going to be. So here's what happened. I kept on buying shirts and buying shirts and buying shirts. And people were like, oh, you're wearing that. You're wearing that. You're wearing that. Where'd you get that from? And I'd be like, I made it. I made it. I made it. Every freaking time, like, it would happen. That's what happened. You, you literally, it's like investing yourself and literally over over again, like, hustling backwards. But in, in actuality, what it was doing is it was putting a lot less way off my shoulders for one thing and second of all it was literally it was making it better to keep my reputation consistent to literally to like um make sure that literally like there's always something flashy going on always something like continuous it's not always about like momentum but it majority of the time it's literally about consistency like literally there was little to no bumps in the road like, where I was working out over and over and over again, they feel like it's a big, like, you know, defect. The fact that I was wasting money on shirts instead of actually, like, trying to, you know, get my own print machines instead of actually, you know, fucking, um, get a company going. Like, you're not professional. All you're doing is, like, you're buying them. And it's because I'm buying them is why I'm getting, like, specific upgrades. Like, the shirts will get better every fucking time, and people will notice that. So, it was actually, like, a form of a business, but... It was this, like, literally, what happened was this, like, every fucking, I would pull a new bitch for a new shirt, and she would be fucking crazy, like, literally, I had so many ideas, and literally, it was going this way, it's going that way, and the worst part 
about that, the really, really, really sucky part about that is literally fucking, um, you know, say that's gambling because I'm not gang anything. I ganged so fucking much that it actually kind of was a detriment because I had so much shit that you can't literally fucking, you know, comprehend and literally, it was getting in the way of business and it held my business back, but they didn't hold it back in a professional way. Where it did is, we don't want you like to literally put this on and that's the reason why every time I kept on putting on a new shirt, you have to understand that like literally fucking... It kept business going. It kept everything intact. I know a lot of people say that I'm not fucking around when it comes to this shirt shit. And I wasn't. But, you know, that was the problem. And I feel like that is another thing that you have to, like, realize is that what they're saying may be true on paper. But, like, the results I was getting in real life were way fucking better than what they were doing. They are fucking struggling, you know, fucking to increase what everything was increasing. So, it's like there's a whole lot that goes into business more than just, like, making money it's Literally, so everything was on stock and consistency. I feel like is the best thing. Consistent momentum. You know, there were no off days in my personal business, and that's literally um something you have to take into account. That literally, when you literally fucking, I'm wasting you know, way less than what they're putting in. You know, and literally, I'm getting the results that they're getting like a whole lot faster and a whole lot quicker because what I'm doing is like what's like a twenty buck t-shirt and you have to spending literally you know fucking mortgage rates, you know, all this other shit that you have to do with making a fucking company and, like, literally, let's get my word out there. You get hella more famous the more work you put in. And so, literally, so that is, um, what was going on, you know. So, that was the relationship where another guy named Al, Al earns a barber shop that literally also makes custom shirts. And so, literally, fucking, it was hella fucking funny. I told him I used to rock like Forrest Gump. And literally, he's all like, oh, to where? I'm like, you know, uh, maybe I see you down. He's like, what? I don't know how many Red Bulls you on drunk. No, nah, but seriously, like fucking Al Lily was out there and shit. But nah, it was fucking cool. Like, being up for a business every freaking week, like to buy a shirt was cool and shit. But literally, that still has nothing to do with Nons. But like, literally, I thought of Al a long fucking time ago. So it was just hella fucking funny. So um, what happened was this, um... And fucking, that's pretty much for the nons update like that. Other special is like really, really, really going to be high tier. It's going to be based off the CP9. And it's not going to compare to the shit I have in the first arc. And I haven't really spoiled anything for the first arc. And literally fucking CP9 shit's going to have a whole lot of other good one-on-one -on -one fights. There might be, might be a Jujutsu Kaisen reference in there. But, you know, that's for another time. That's like literally not into like maybe a couple of arcs in. And, you know, so fucking, and then that's a nonsense update. So as far as the season two update, season two still has a couple more profile videos. But Lily, I have really, 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 really a big thing to tell you. Like Lily, it was a big risk when like really when you're putting all this work into a shirt and you're getting on back. Like you're going broke before you can sell, bro. I'm like, actually, you know, it's way, 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 way fucking different. Like Lily, that is literally a definition of of advertising like you're paying for advertisement every time you make those shirts and like literally that is what i learned like literally they think that like it's a default well literally it worked into my favor so much but that's a little bit of a story for another video but far as a season two update aquafina is coming for season two and she's literally getting her own profile video so if you don't know who aquafina is aquafina is literally a girl that i met at crunchyroll that literally 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 Everybody talks about it on the street. So, Lily Aquafina is going to get her own personal video for season two. And like I said, season two is all about storytelling. So, Lily, I was really, really saving this for a while. But Aquafina is going to get her own, own profile for season two. It's literally so fucking crazy. Like, this is a season two update, Lily. And we still have a couple more versus battles. We have Dale versus Telly. We have fucking Ralph versus Eric. And we have a special surprise um, fucking versus battle at the end. And literally, there's more profile videos, but it's so fucking crazy. But fucking, yeah, Aquafina is coming. It's a big fucking channel update. This is literally, they really call this gambling. Like, literally, the way I fucking view my life, the way I fucking do my life, literally. Fucking, you take too many fucking chances, like, without guarantees and literally. But they're based off, like, literally, the strong estimates and this is literally hustling done right versus hustling wrong. So I'm going to tell you, so this is the basis of the video. The reason why this is a, actually a good technique and why this isn't gambling is this is literally, this is game. 
on paper versus game in real life. So game on paper is like literally selfishness. Oh, why the fuck do you have to get this bitch when you only got that bitch? Oh, because this bitch has literally something that that bitch doesn't have. I want to be greedy. I want to take everybody's bitch. I want to like literally, I want to do this and that. I want to like literally, oh, I already have this. I want to get this guy to choose like literally this and that. So that is greed and greed is a form of game, but greed isn't the way like you win at life. So greed versus like actual game. So this is fake game. Greed is fake game. So greed is literally like everybody else like swarming in a fucking pool and literally trying to bring each other fucking down like crabs in a bucket type shit. So that's literally the craziest shit fucking. That is a form of game. So greed is a really, really, really good form of game. It gets you a lot of fucking results. But greed comes where it costs. So I'm going to tell you the secret to how you actually have real game. Real game is giving. Giving is better than literally greed. So what you're doing, so what I just explained through this whole video is this is what they call really, really, really bad, but this is real game. Real game is when you give. So Lily, being kind and courteous to your neighbor, like Lily, being respectful to everyone is literally how you have real game. That's real free game. Making sure you're good with everyone. Make sure you're respectful to everyone. Make sure like Lily, you're giving something to everyone. So like Lily, that's the whole purpose of like why holidays. That's really, really those good signs. So that's the exact opposite of greed. I understand that greed is literally, literally, literally a good ass fucking thing to have when you're growing up in life, especially when you've been mistreated. Greed is something that definitely like helps you. You can definitely fucking like earn from greed. I'm not denying that because when you have a foundation of good and like literally when you try to be a good person your whole life and you understand what greed can do, you definitely got to have greed. But you know, Greed comes with like self suffering, it comes with, you know, because we all feel bad inside. We all want to treat people like a nice people, but we don't get away with it all the time because our environment doesn't let us all the time. But what the great part about greed is the real game is give. What I had I was giving. Giving, 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 giving is literally what fucking, what's what real greed is. Real fucking greed is literally respecting your neighbor, you know, giving to your neighbor like Lily. That is literally how you exceed a life. That's real game. Because the shit I did for 40 Water, that is giving. Giving, 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 giving. That's the real greed in this game. That's the real game. In real life, being nice to people, being overly nice to people, loving people for who you are, and always showing appreciation for them is how you literally, really, 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 really get further in life. And that is real game versus fake game because real game like comes with love and understanding. And fake gun, I mean, fake game comes with literally you fucking like um greed and manipulation like you manipulate the person like you literally you do this and that but giving is literally a way better way of getting game what i was doing for raven justice was giving 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 like literally i made him more famous i made neff more famous like literally I'm giving 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 greed is like literally like oh i'm gonna just take this now i'm gonna take your money i'm gonna take your whole fucking idea i'm gonna do this and that, and like Lily, that is fucking greed. Like Lily, I'm gonna take your fucking music, and I'm gonna claim that Lily, it's Lily, my fucking shit. And Lily, I'm gonna claim that like you ain't shit without me. Like Raven, like you won't be shit without my envies. No, fucking, I always fucking always nice to people 24 seven. That is real game. Real game is Lily treating people the way you want to be treated, and real OGs will respect that. Real OGs respect like somebody who's Lily. Just trying to make it out. And Lily, that's why they love me on this. Because I didn't ask for much. All I asked was for a shout out. And Lily, that is literally the good game of life. When you try to be nice to girls, you have to be literally overly nice to girls. And not in a mean way. Not for an end result. But because you actually fucking like them. Like, hey, I heard you like this band. And I, there was like a free fucking sticker of Lily at the store. So Lily, I was wondering if you would like it. And Lily, as a general interest, that is how you treat people with respect. You know, you Lily, that is the good way to earn game. You gain the best connections through that form of game. Greed, when you're literally manipulating the situation, should only be at a time when they're trying to, like, already manipulate you, and you're going along the way. Like, say if you have an abusive boss, and, like, you, you tell them, like, like, well, I've been doing this and this and that. Can you cut me a break for a little bit? That is when you use greed to your advantage. You be a little bit aggressive when they already, like, establish that, like, they're burning you through too much. And some people really, really, really understand that. Like, there was a boss at my old job that literally, I was actually, like... Like, uh, there was this time when somebody brought a fucking pet in, and I'm all like, hey, no animals allowed. She's like, it's for emotional support. I'm like, I'm just fucking with you. Like, Lily, it was hella fucking funny. Like, Lily, but fucking, like, I, there was this other older bro that I was getting at, and my boss was like, hey, go focus on your work. But he's usually hella fucking cool with me. And so, Lily, what I was thinking is literally fucking like, oh, I was, I was that young again. Like, Lily, and that boss loves me, and that's literally the craziest fucking thing. It's like, you have to understand, like, sometimes people have emotional moments. And when you're 
the best Ryan for seven. When you're respectful Ryan for seven, it's hard for people to fuck with you because it's literally just you, literally just showing love. You literally have to literally respect. That's why I always tag a rapper whenever I made an AMV. Like, yo, look what I did. I really like your music. This is what I did. I made this look. I made music video, and they would see, oh, this shit is fucking crazy. Oh, this shit. He put all this work in for me. Like, literally, literally at the bottom of your heart, that's really what gives you results in life. Not literally you fucking conquering territories. A lot of people think diss tracks and all that shit. It's a good way to earn attention, but fucking, you know, it depends, you know, but at the same time, the best way to get results is actually respecting people and treating the way you, you are you treated. Now, that's the real gambling in life, so fucking, um, that is what you really fucking do. You focus on respect more than fucking results, and you'll get way, 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 way further in life because people get results right away, and literally, they fall like a shooting star, and that's not really, really a good thing, you know, fucking... You know what? Shove anything down anyone's throat. You know what? I'd be this and that. When you respect people, you get a whole lot more positive feedback. And you literally like, hey, this guy's hella fucking cool. This and that. Oh, all you had to do was literally give him a shout out and this and that. Like, literally, that's what I learned about life. And like, there's so much respectful shit that comes with that. It's not even fucking funny. And that's how you get free fucking results. That's why people kept on reposting my content because I did with actual passion. I didn't do it like literally. Like, ha, 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 I'm the shit. I'm a fucking music video producer and this and that. Like, nah, 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 man. Like, literally, that is how you actually get real results. That is game in real life versus game on TV. Being reasonable about, about a situation is literally the fucking best way to handle a situation. Like, you being kind and reasonable is always going to be better than you being demanding. Like, hey, you've been delaying this shit for this long, this long, this long, you know? And, you know, it's free because you don't put yourself in a bad position. You can only benefit from being nice when it comes to that situation. That's what a lot of these rappers told me. I have a very good gambling addiction because what I do is, like, literally, I do something that nobody else would do. It's like, are you sure? It's not a guarantee. But I do it, like, with love, and I put it out there, and I always get more in the end because, like, literally, I'm willing to let it go so it comes back like a boomerang. That's literally how life works, and literally, fucking, um, my gambling addiction also comes from Vegas back when I was, like, Working with my Uncle Dave, dog. This is fucking crazy. So, this is fucking a misconception I had. Fucking, but it was fucking funny. So, I'm gonna let you know a little bit about life and, like, literally how things pan out. So, I'm kind of his favorite nephew because I'm really fucking into, like, entertainment and shit. So, fucking, back when I was, like, I think it was 2018, it was beginning to do the ending of 2018. Life really worked into my favorite. So, I went, like, literally at the crafts table with Uncle David. And so, I literally fucking, like, um, like, literally, I was hitting craps and craps and craps and literally, I was hitting that shit over and over and over again. And literally, that shit was so fucking good. I won 200 fucking bucks. I put in 100 and literally, I got 200 back. I literally, I fucking balled on Uncle David that day. And that shit was fucking crazy. I literally went so fucking real. Like, literally, literally just hitting it every fucking time. And literally, I made so much fucking bank that day. I was so fucking proud of myself. All in front of my favorite uncle, too. That shit was fucking crazy. So this is another fucking crazy thing about my gambling addiction and literally why it worked out into my favor, literally doing this and that, you know. And what was crazy was this fucking, there was this one time, like, where Uncle David, he was smoking me out. We were smoking that little fucking hemp over in Las Vegas and shit. Like, I was just having a good time. My uncle, you know, and I saw $100 literally in the hotel room. And literally, I thought it was one of my hoes. I literally, I thought it was one of the girls that gave that shit to me. So, I literally, I stole that shit. And I literally, I put it in. And so, Uncle David looked at the fucking table. He's like, huh? Literally, he's like, fucking, he's swiping his hands off and shit. He's literally, he's like, oh, fucking, I must be the fucking hallucinating and shit like that. So, literally, I, I'm thinking, I'm like, so, I thought that it was my host, but it could be Uncle David, but I didn't fucking say anything. So, literally, I, he looked like he was looking for his fucking money. So, literally, I'm all like, oh, well, fucking, um, I fucking, he was already fucking carrying me. He was already, like, doing hella shit. He was buying me hella shit. He bought me a couple shirts. Like, literally, that's my favorite fucking uncle and shit. And so, literally, Uncle Dave were fucking hella ham. And so, literally, what I figured out was fucking this. is like, literally... There was another thing in fucking life that I learned through that experience. It was literally, I literally, I fucking, I stole a hundred fucking dollars from David on top of the thing. And he literally, he took it like it was fucking nothing. He's like, oh, well, I, that couldn't have been fucking there. Like that. Even though I've grown fucking a lot and shit like that. It was hella fucking crazy because of how he was like comprehending it. And literally, why I learned that in the future, he probably did realize it in the end. But fucking like, he probably knew it was me. But he probably let go for this reason. I realized why he let go. Even after I won all this fucking money, this isn't a form of greed. This is a form of understanding. 
I took something that could easily be replaced. And that is literally what I learned from that experience. Like, Uncle Dave was looking for his fucking money and this and that. Uh, yeah, I stole a fucking hundred dollars, but I really I thought it was my hoes, man. Because bitches were stalking me at the time. I literally thought that it was my hoes. Girls get wearing fucking everything. You're like, oh, how did they get in the hotel room? It's called a pussy pass, bro. Like, literally. I literally thought that they left that shit for me. Like, literally. Because that shit was there the night before. I'm like, how the fuck? Literally. And it was literally just a fucking hundred and shit like that. Uncle Dave let it go. So, literally, that is literally the fucking craziest shit. Like, this is all upon my fucking gambling addiction. And the reason why I took it. And it was a good thing that I took it. Is because it was something that can easily be replaced. He wasn't asking me about that. He wasn't checking me. It was everything. But I didn't really actually, like, be, like, literally, I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't want to start that shit. But literally, that was hella fucking funny because he's like, oh, what the, the, the what the fuck? I'm really sorry if I took that shit. I'm not <laughs> that shit was hella fucking long ago. But at the same time, like, literally, that is a universal fucking lesson. You know what I'm saying? Like, there was, literally... I learned a whole fucking lot, and literally, that is actually a pretty fucking universal thing in life, it's like, literally, when you do shit like that, that comes from a foundation of understanding, and you're fucking realize that, I mean, if you were to fucking call me out, I would have given her away while away, so, like, I fucking wrote it, so I thought he must be cool with it, <laughs> literally, fucking, like, literally, that was a part of my gambling addiction, I was really killing shit at that craft table, like, literally, so, you know, I made good use of that money, I bought a couple of cosplays, yeah, I fucking, I used the fucking Vegas money I earned to go buy a couple of cosplays, and that shit was actually hella funny, so, like, that shit was dope. I still got to keep my fucking, like, cosplay clear. Everything was consistent back then. And those were my gambling days, really. Why I do stuff that people weren't recommending me doing because that causes confusion. When you have really word of mouth and you really keep on increasing in popularity but don't increase in profit, that's a huge fucking contradiction because things need structure. But I've learned, like, through the group home, through cleaning my room every fucking day, how to structure my shit properly. Like, oh, I'm not going to upload this if fucking the colors are fucking mixed mass. I'm not going to literally upload this video that has you feel a certain way and, like, literally upload another video that doesn't, like, match the vibe of the last one and then literally change it throughout the week. Like, if you fucking notice that I do that on purpose, like, literally, I learned fucking, like, um, do a group on how to keep myself clean, how to do this and that, and, like, literally how fucking, you know, how to be structured. So I was structured like a company, but I wasn't getting paid. So on the outside, I kept on literally stayed being consistent like there was no fucking setbacks and you know sometimes in business you do have setbacks and that is literally due to sometimes getting business the wrong way doing this now when you get a business through nothing but understanding there is literally 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 like fucking no bumps in your career but you know i can't honestly say that because having word of mouth gave me a huge fucking bump because i was you know, up against a whole bunch of people who had shit on paper but their careers were slowly fucking declining because of literally fucking there's some people who will try to fuck me over. I'm like, okay, fucking, if I don't fucking do this, you're not going to be as nearly as famous. Even though they don't put it on paper, like, fucking, you know, if I don't make a Raven AMV, he won't be as nearly as fucking respected as he was back in the day. Back where I put Raven, I was fucking Raven. Well, literally, that was fucking everything, you know? That's fucking, almost fucking shot his shit down on BET. Almost fucking shot his fucking music video career down because of literally how fucking crazy that shit went. But, you know, all fair is all love, you know? I just respect people. I just fucking... Go by every day, and that's game in real life, you know. And that's literally that's game from God. Like literally, like you literally don't always have to ask. Sometimes you give and receive. So that's literally my gambling addiction.